good morning students good morning so we are in the process of discussing the uh, sources of taxation and various types of taxation and in the previous class we have discussed about the meaning of tax then what is the difference between direct and indirect tax then various types of direct taxes and we have also started with the various types of indirect taxes i'll just brief up the yesterday's discussion we have started discussing about the various indirect taxes uh, uh, in india especially and in this as we have discussed service taxes the taxes which has been imposed on the various services including uh, the uh, banking services services rendered by uh, the various uh, maybe the uh, postage services uh, postal services courier services then all um, uh, education services health services all the service sectors which includes the uh, the service tax for the government then uh, we have also discussed the excise duty excise duty which consists of the duties for imports and exports of goods and services and we have also seen the gst uh, in detail about what is gst the goods and service tax where and all the gst will be applicable and uh, uh, what is the difference between gst and value added taxes value added taxes has been uh, previously the, uh, we used to have value added taxes for goods and services now the value added taxes has been eliminated but only for few uh commodities the value added uh, taxes has been imposed especially for uh, the uh, petrol and diesel and lpg gas and we should also understand additionally what is value added tax why that value added tax has been arrived in the uh, name in the practice and normally whenever any commodities has been produced that has been produced with the value addition uh, for example uh, as i told uh, if you see the textile manufacturing first it will be produced with the yarn yarn has been produced from cotton then once the yarn has been produced first cotton is the agriculture commodities for agriculture commodities we don't have any taxation then once the agriculture commodity cotton is produced the industrial people the yarn industry they will procure cotton from uh, the uh, the producers of cotton from agriculture sector and they will reform into yarn when it is uh, a raw cotton doesn't carry any uh, uh, taxation once it is reformed as or transformed as yarn that contains some value addition because they are uh, they are uh, making they are twisting it and after the twisting it will become a yarn then yarn had been used for stitching of materials or weaving of materials once the yarn is manufactured on the well while the yarn producer selling that commodity then they have to charge the taxes and they have to once collected they have to pay to the government so once the value is added from cotton to yarn the value addition tax that is value added tax that they have to pay sir is it that value added taxes is going to stop there no further that yarn is not going to be used as it is the uh, weaving uh, weavers they are going to buy the yarn and they are going to color it according to their requirement and they are going to view it as a cloth when it is become a cloth then when they are selling as a cloth to the other person that is also contains value addition because the cloth is not came with his hand as cloth it came to him as yarn and he has woven it then it becomes the cloth so the cloth is having the value addition it is not going to end up there again the cloth manufacturers they are going to sell it for the tailors or the manufacturers of shirts pants and so on and when they buy they will stitch it in the form of wearable shirts then the, when they selling the shirts 
to the uh, either to the retailer or to the directly to the consumer there also we need to add the value addition so wherever they are making the value addition to reform or transform that one commodity into another commodity till it will become a finished product till it will become an uh, end product for the ultimate consumer the value addition will be more and more and more and it will be end up with the end consumer and the end consumer has to bear or take the burden of whole taxes which has been imposed from the beginning point of where the man the yarn is manufactured till the, he is buying the shirts from the showroom so that is what it is termed as value addition it is not the one stage uh, 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 imposition of taxation it is a multi stage imposition of taxation that is what uh, the uh, the government of india also, also when when they imposed uh, gst they have told that value added taxes has been uh, uh, withdrawn or it has been removed and gst is to be introduced because gst is not having any multi stage uh, a taxation system but value added taxes is having multi stage uh taxation system but gst will transform from one hand to another hand but value added taxes will not transform but further further it will adds the value to the uh, commodities uh we can also say value added taxes is a multi stage taxation okay so that is about uh, gst and value added tax then uh, we have also discussed custom duties custom duties the duties which has been purchased goods and services from foreign countries it is not meant that import and export we are individually we are purchasing some commodities from uh, foreign countries for example we are buying laptops other commodities so that we need to pay customs duties for bringing in the commodities from outside india to india so that the individual has to pay custom duties for the commodities for their purchasing and stamp duty as i told whenever we want to sell and by the uh, assets then we have to uh, write it in the document called stamp papers so those stamp papers we need to uh, make payment for buying of uh, uh, duty duty in the sense the it is value of that stamp papers for example even court fee something we want to pay court fees that has to be paid through stamp duties only not in form of cash payment so indirectly we are paying taxes for any kind of fees is or any kind of uh, uh, taxes for uh, transaction of assets that we need to pay this stamp duties even for buying of shares bonds also we need to make some amount of stamp duties but that will be minimum when it is when it is uh, uh, for uh, purchase of assets it will be higher and entertainment tax also we have seen uh, while we are uh, uh going for movies yes of course we need to pay entertainment taxes for, along with the movie tickets amusement parks we need to pay entertainment taxes wherever the entertainment taxes entertainment events are happening entertainment act, economic activities are happening there and all we need to pay entertainment taxes that is also an indirect taxes will pay to the retailer or to the event management then it will be transformed to the the government then the final one what we have seen is uh, the securities transaction tax so whenever we buy uh, the securities either from banks or from non bank financial institutions or from uh, any of the share market agencies like uh, as we told in the previous example also sir share con angel broking pnb baribus like that there are so many agencies are there from the agencies when we buy securities through them then we need to tax uh, pay taxes for the securities when they buy and sold so for the transaction amount will be uh, uh, depends upon the transaction amount we need to pay taxes to the the agencies or banks or to the nbfc and nbfcs those agencies they will next they will pay to the government and the payment will be indirectly collected and it will be paid to the government so that is called as security transaction taxes securities where we can buy we can buy from uh, the uh, 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 buy and sell with the banks non banking 
financial institutions or any of the uh, sebi approved nsc and bsc approved enrolled uh, uh, agencies uh, share market agencies from there we can buy the securities of companies for example uh, icic securities we can buy from icic bank also we can buy from angel broking also we can buy because it is uh, uh, open for all the people from wherever we, they can have the demat account from there we can buy while we are buying we don't charge any security transaction cost but when we are selling depends upon the value of that we need to pay taxes to the uh, the for the transaction so this is how we have seen the uh, the various types of uh, 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 the goods and services taxes or indirect taxes in the last class now we are going to see the principles of taxation the students everyone is with me or following with me yes sir yes yes so, yes so the principle of taxation what is the principle of taxation for any government when they are imposing taxes they have to have follow certain principle why they need to follow certain principle because while they are taxing to public that has to be appropriate that has to be optimum and it has to be uh, uh, have some ethics simply if we are charging so much of taxes it will become so much of burden for the people because any country for that matter uh, any economy for the matter so the imposing taxes itself it's, they should not uh, have the, uh, the creation of wealth taxation should be an appropriate and optimum so that uh, the many economists uh, starting from adam smith they have given various uh, thoughts economic thoughts related to how optimum or how we can uh, uh, provide a uh, uh, frame and appropriate tax policies or taxation systems so that people will not affected because of taxation because if there is a huge taxation also people will have more burden so that they could not able whatever they are earning they are have they have to pay to the government as taxes they could not have uh, the purchasing power to buy the goods and services it will become a very big uh, economic and political issue so the 18th century the economists like adam smith they have uh, given uh, a certain important principle or canons of taxation canons means the principle certain implications a certain uh, a nature of uh, how we can uh, uh, impose taxes in that uh, the the major objective was we should not uh, uh, put so much of tax burden to the uh, tax payers or to the public and we need to uh, distribute the tax burdens to across the nation for across the people so that if the distribution is good then the tax burden will be distributed so the first one what he has suggested the government has to follow the policy or principle of ability to pay taxation ability to pay taxation that will be termed as ability to pay theory or ability to pay principle ability to pay principle then we have to understand what is the ability to pay principle for any government when they are imposing taxes they have to understand what is the ability or capability of the tax payers it has to be the, the taxation system has to be a individual tax it depends upon the individuals income or because their ability is measured on the basis of the how much income they are earning 
it is purely fundamentally depends upon how much the ability they can able to pay sir can we go for equal amount of percentage of uh, taxation yes we can go uh, that is a kind of a pro progressive system if it is a progressive system if you put some uh, uh, 10% then those who are earning lesser they will pay only 10% those who are earning higher they will also pay 10% but for the higher income 10% will be greater and lower income 10% amount will be lesser and we can also go for a proportional system sir higher the income will increase the taxation if it is 10% we can uh, if the income is higher then we can make it as 15% or 20% it is depends upon one country to come another country and their own policy but the, the basic idea is whether we are whether we are following progressive taxation system or proportional taxation system for both the system and another one uh, one uh, method is the regressive taxation system that is actually more income lesser tax percentage that means uh, uh, some government uh, they think if it is for somebody is earning 10000 rupees if you pay it, if you put impose 10% tax 1000 rupees will be the taxation when somebody is uh, 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 earning 10 lakh rupees if you put same 10 percentage then they have to pay 1 lakh rupees taxation what the government is what those people that higher in income people are saying so we don't want we, we we don't want to earn more income we'll limit our income so that we'll pay lesser taxes so the government has to provide some concession those who are earning lesser you put them 10 percent they will pay only 1000 rupees when i am earning 10 lakh rupees you make it 5% so that i will pay 50000 rupees rather than 1 lakh pay so such kind of when income is goes percentage of taxation comes down that is a regressive taxation whether a regressive taxation or progressive taxation or proportional uh, 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 proportional taxation the ultimate aim or objective or uh, the characteristic should be it should be ability don't put taxation for common people all people those who are earning you need to incorporate or impose taxation if it is depends upon the income of an individual that is called as ability to pay principle or it is also a one of the fundamental characteristics of a tax yes bhavana you raised your hands you have if you have any question sir can you please explain progressive tax once again progressive and proportional Hi. yeah progressive proportional and regressive progressive and proportional almost same the progressive taxation suppose if somebody is earning lesser they will be charged lesser amount of taxation if somebody is earning more they have they are liable to pay more taxation that is called as progressive taxation whereas proportional taxation even the uh, lower income middle income or higher income they will say they will pay the, the proportionally same percentage of taxation but the amount of taxes will differ progressive when income grows the percentage of taxation also grows proportional when income uh, uh, slab is different uh, p different people are earning different income but the taxation will be proportional uh, uh, same 10% 10% 10% will go but the tax amount will differ depends upon their income level and the third one is regressive where is it is opposite to progressive where 10% uh, where the lesser income people will pay higher percentage of taxes that means that we can uh, note it down as 10% and when the income is goes up then they will pay lesser that will be a reverse order yes one more we got it bhavana yes sir thank you sir
someone has raised some one more student have raised uh, and who's that mistake sir okay okay no problem so this is what uh, the uh, the different uh, uh, system of taxation that will be one one country they will follow a different system of taxation but the in ability to pay principal whatever the tax structure you are following whether irrespective of proportional progressive or regressive but the ultimate goal has to be the ability to pay principal we need to first we have to check whether they can able to pay whether the capab the capacity is there then we need to uh, check which uh, depends upon the uh, the economic situation depends upon the societies uh, uh, are the willing to pay the taxes and ability to pay taxes then we can impose taxation and the second principle of taxation according to adam smith the idea that there should be some equivalence between what the individual pays and the benefits he subsequently receives from the governmental activities that is also another we need to ensure the idea that should be a uh, some equivalence between what the individual pays for example sir i am paying 20000 rupees taxes per year and the benefits he or she subsequently receives from the governmental activities but this is little complicated one uh, or uh, controversial one the second principle is with related to our basic definition of taxation what is the de basic definition of taxation according to do uh, do uh, 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 dalton and uh, uh, musgrave what is the basic Ah, compulsory yes. payment without any direct benefit yes so tax is a compulsory payment without having any direct returns or benefit but here adam smith is saying uh, there should be i uh, here also he uh, adam smith also is very uh, technically he is uh, putting the word there should not there should be some equivalence between what the individual pays and the government lacks to pay and he is not saying direct benefit but the government activities should match with its his what he pays to the uh, as taxes for example if you see sir i am paying some taxes what kind of benefit i am getting no direct benefit i am getting even the uh, the Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, definition itself is told there is no direct benefit okay sir but this road and all my uh, nearby my house road and all very poor i am not getting uh, water services of, i mean the drinking water services from government the electricity problem is keep on coming then uh, the transport facilities is not available uh, if they construct if they uh, given one Uh, opportunity for railway station here that will be good if they extended railway station from one area to my nearby area that will be good these are all uh, the the uh, flip side of the people uh, because people they are expecting more from the government but what is the another principle is saying when they are uh, 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 the government is the individual is paying taxes they are always expect some benefits not the return because the return won't be available but they may expect some kind of benefit when i am paying taxes they have to pay they have to give me some amount of benefit to me either maybe a welfare schemes or they can give some amount some amount of subsidies on certain essential commodities then yes of course with the present example if you see so many people in india they are paying taxes and government has given 
free vaccination for all the population right government is charging any money for vaccination no sir no so that is some kind of benefit there is a best example in the present scenario and uh, uh, even if you go to the uh, government hospital the rt pcr test is fully free otherwise if we take outside then we need to pay 800 rupees and for vaccination for outside we need to pay 1000 rupees and if you are getting it from the government then it will absolutely free that how they are getting so much of crores and crores of vaccination that is because so many indian people are paying taxes so that somewhat it should be some equivalence between what taxes paid and the return now i'll calculate i paid 10000 rupees last year taxation in my family members four people they have took vaccination so 4000 returned you got it yes sir Uh, so some kind of equivalence between what the individual pays and benefits subsequently this is from the government activities not only this is uh, this is 4000 i can estimate apart from that i am also getting uh, uh, the railway uh, benefits at uh, uh, 250 rupees uh, uh, ticket value but actual transportation cost if we go to some 300 400 kilometers then we need to pay 600 rupees for uh, for private uh, buses and uh, the other uh, 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 transportation charges so there also i am getting benefit i am getting the free water uh, uh, services i mean the metro water is coming just 300 rupees i am paying uh, for 6 months as metro water charge and it is almost e uh, free only and uh, the local buses available at 20 rupees i can reach uh, railway station for 10 km if i using uh, uh, private auto i have to pay 300 rupees so when we calculate all these benefits some what what i am paying taxes it will be written back either i am just saying an example of uh, the uh, direct taxes even whatever we are paying in indirect taxes that will also be calculated but only thing and the difference between the indirect and direct uh, uh, taxes indirect tax direct taxes those ability to pay is calculated and the uh, taxes has been also be calculated but indirect taxes ability to pay is not calculated but still people has to pay for example uh, you people are students are you paying taxes are you paying taxes anyone is paying paying taxes no sir no no everyone is paying taxes but indirect tax is yes ah, yes indirect tax because indirect taxes it's not seeing any ability to pay principal but direct taxes will see what is the individual income based upon the individual income taxes will be levied but uh, the indirect taxes whatever we are consuming or when we are buying then immediately we need to pay taxes yes of course you are also tax payers but indirect tax payers or you are the uh, 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 gst payers whenever the consumption is happening so the with respect to the benefit principle the government has to look into uh, what how how we can provide some equality uh, between the tax amount collected and the government services and the, uh, the next one is uh, related to the uh, adam smith's fourth canon because adam smith has given four canon out of this four canon we are going to take some of the principles uh, in line with the adam smith canons of taxation and he also interpret or emphasize the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the the uh, tax system should not interfere with market decision making as well as the more obvious need to avoid complexity and corruption 
so the tax principle or the taxation system should not lead to uh, the corruption or sometimes what will happen because of over taxation people will uh, uh, avoid taxation and people will not show the uh, the uh, the real income to the government so that is all will problem will happen so the another principle what the taxation system should should show that the 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 taxation system should not interfere the market decision making what are the market decision making the market decision making like determination of prices determination of supply determination of demand determination of the production then uh, uh, it should not affect the competition and it should not affect the common people like that it should not affect the or interfere the uh, market decision without interfering the market then they can impose a taxation for uh, 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 indirect or direct taxation so first benefit first uh, principle is ability to pay principle that the government has to look into it because it is a basic and fundamental principle and second one the government should uh, provide some amount of equality for government services and the amount of tax received then third one the taxation system or the taxation principle should not interfere the market decision making the market decision making such as the related to price decisions uh, uh, product decision output decision and demand decisions these should not be affected because of the taxation system but sometimes it will affect them. even if you impose more taxes the price will increase if you impose more taxes on raw materials that will affect the production but we should the government has to look into follow the the the, the ideas or canons or characteristics of a taxation system that should not they have to uh, they have to uh, 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 very cautionate when we when they are imposing the taxes they have to calculate all these market conditions then only they have the government has to put the taxation how we are seeing the individuals income depends upon their ability how we are making the uh, uh, the putting the taxation how the government services is providing based on that you are putting the taxes to the individual like that you have to see without interfering without damaging or without uh, the affecting the market decisions and market conditions then we need to incorporate or impose the taxation that is the another principle of taxation then we need to go for distribution of tax burdens so the another topic is called as distribution of tax burdens every tax system it has to be equally distributed to all the people when it has to be equally distributed then when we are going for an ability to pay tax pay taxation and giving the benefit i mean uh, uh, how we are going to uh, utilize this tax for the benefit of the people that will be called as distribution of tax burdens because the tax burden should not be more on one side it should not be skimmed on a particular side it has to be uh, mutually or uh, it has to be uh, uh, it has to spread over the population so uh, uh, according to the various principles political pressures and uh, the objectives could direct a uh, government tax policy even though when they have to follow the principles uh, the benefit principle then ability to pay principle then market condition they have to keep it in mind the government has to keep it in mind then other side political pressures also is there because any government simply they could not able to put 40% 50% taxation because every government is having the opponent parties in the parliament so the party uh, the opponent party will ask question don't put so much of taxes on farmers don't put uh, taxes on industries don't put taxes on the common people to put more burden like that so many 
questions will come. Uh, then uh, the goals can be direct uh, government policy, and they have to keep it in mind all the principles, all uh, the political pressures, and the government is also having some objective to earn a revenue for the uh, the distribution of the, uh, the redistribution to the people by benefit. All this they have to keep it in mind, and they have to frame the tax policy. That is the major objective is the distribution of tax burdens. Then second one, what follow is a decision of discussion of some of the leading principles that can shape decision about taxation. The leading principle we know, first principle. What is the first principle? Ability. To pay. Ability to pay principle, yes. For all this leading principle, the government has to keep it in mind when they are fixing the taxes for various goods and services, and they have to uh, keep in mind, they have to uh, check uh, uh, what percentage of uh, taxation to be levied for the in, uh, income uh, direct taxes. And here also we can, we'll have some question. Uh, for example, sir, uh, ability to pay taxes, we can find out for direct taxes. Suppose uh, when the government is imposing taxes for income, uh, taxes on income, then we can uh, frame policy like somebody is earning more, we can put more taxes there. Somebody is earning less, we can put less taxes. Am I right? That is the proper policy for ability to pay taxation. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, for indirect taxes, how we can calculate? We do not know who's uh, buying the goods and services, whether the poor is buying uh, goods and services or uh, 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 the richer is buying the goods and services. We do not know. And by face to face or individual to individual, we cannot change the GST also. Once it is GST is imposed, it is imposed. Poor is buying, they have to bear the taxation. But how we can uh, adopt the uh, principle of uh, ability to pa uh, pay theory here? Any idea is there? Sir, by subsidies and other welfare program. Hmm, very good. We can also provide subsidy for certain commodity. But the problem is here, sub subsidy is on price of the commodity. But tax subsidy, how we can give? People will ask, why you gave him subsidy? Why I give me subsidy for me also? I am. Uh, you are saying I am uh, earning more. That is why you are not giving subsidy. I am earning more. I already paid income tax. You give subsidy to me also. Everybody will ask, no. Bhavna? Hi, sir thinking sir ah yes yes please please so based on the utility sir based on the utility how can you please elaborate? like essential goods sir. ah like very that. good very good yes yes correct yes sir. so less taxation ah correct 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 ah yes so i'll explain based upon the nature of the commodity we can impose taxes got it bhavna Yes, sir. Uh, for inferior commodity, they can put lesser income taxes. For uh, the essential commodity, they can put some taxes. For necessary commodities, they can put different taxes. For luxurious commodity, they can put more taxes. But we have certain uh, disparities also. In the recent budget, what happened uh, for uh, Umberla, the taxation has been increased, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that is some disparity is there. That is, uh, or uh, it is, uh, it has to be discussed. And and uh, for Umberla, it has increased, and one luxury commodity it has declined, I guess. I think it is for gold or. Uh, some commodity it is declined, luxurious commodity. Okay, we'll look, look into that. 
um, so but it should not be there but in reality or in in, in uh, uh, based on the uh, the uh, ability to pay principle uh, the government has to impose taxation on depends upon the nature of the product as shantakumari has told uh, how uh, the the, uh, the commodities as consumed by various group of people because inferior goods uh, it is uh, essential for or uh, necessary goods for the common people so the for those goods uh, the government can give uh, 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 comparatively lesser taxes and for uh, certain uh, uh, luxurious commodities because they are not going to buy the luxury products on everyday basis so for those things they can provide subsidies i mean not subsidies uh, uh, more in uh, taxes per more percentage in taxes that is the idea of uh, the principle of ability to pay theory for uh, indirect taxes fine so next one is we need to follow equity equity means uh, equality uh how equity has to be followed we have to uh, uh impose taxes for uh, a similar income group we need to impose same amount of taxes for higher income groups we need to make higher same amount of income taxes that is called as equity or equality in imposition of taxation in that principle of equality that is another principle principle of equality in this principle of equality we have two broad categories one is horizontal equity and another one is vertical equity horizontal equity and vertical equity we'll just see what is horizontal equity the principle of horizontal equity refers to the person in same or similar position so far as tax purposes are concerned will be subject to the same tax liability sir uh, i am earning 1 lakh rupees from my work from my job the another person my friend he is also earning same 1 lakh rupees from his business the another person he is also earning 1 lakh from his consultancy and one more person he is a doctor and for treatment he is also getting 1 lakh per month for all this different groups different professions different amount uh, different uh, sources of revenue one is from business one is from consultancy one is from job one is from wage one is from treatment but all these persons are comes under the equal amount of income earning and when their income earnings are similar or same and they have to be charged a similar amount of or i mean same amount of percentage of taxation then only we can able to incorporate equity incorporate equity sir then farmers are also some farmers are also earning 1 lakh for example uh, they are uh, uh, farming some activity and for for example uh, mangoes they are uh, plugging out mangoes then they are selling they got 1 uh, lakh rupees income yes of course they are also equally be charged then only we can follow the equity for the commodities they produce doesn't carry any taxes because we want to promote their uh, production but when they earn income that will be charged agriculture income tax yes of course it is also calculated calculated as income tax incomes so the, we need to follow a uh, equity or equality for those who are earning a similar income 
that has to be or similar position they have to be charged equally then they will have the same tax liability same same tax liability in the sense they are having uh, the capacity or the liability or their responsibility to pay the tax same when they are having same income but when they are sourcing it from different sources of income sir uh, one fellow is uh, not working anything but he is having on building and he is also getting 1 lakh rupees uh, uh, rent from his house yes that is also to be included in the income tax he is also liable to pay same income tax because that is also an income money and sir i uh, invested some 1 uh, crore rupees in the bank uh, Uh, in for, uh, FD, I am getting one lakh rupees per month from as an income tax. Yes, of course, as I told in the earlier class also, we need to once it is processed ten thousand rupees, your ability to pay will increase. Your ability to pay is there one lakh rupees uh, 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 income, then you have to pay the taxes. So in practice, this equality principle is often disregarded. because some places there will be a problem because people will not show the their income because if i am working in an organized sector my income will be recorded to the government because i am getting the income through bank but when consultancy they are not getting it from bank they will take the money in cash doctors anybody is getting uh, any patients are coming oh, okay you pay in my account no they are directly receiving the money other than doctors who is working in the hospital and somebody is doing consultancy they won't show farmers when they are receiving 1 lakh rupees from the wholesaler nobody is go and inform to the tax office so this equality principle sometimes or many times will be disregarded because of people's intentionally or sometimes they may not know it is not usually uh, they are not practicing it apart from the regular income earners through organized sector and intentional violations are usually motivated more by the politics than by sound economic policy because of uh, the some of the uh, tax advantages granted to the farmers is farmers okay they are not show because of the farmers are struggling and home owners as i told this rent people those who are earning so much of money as rent they never show their income to the income tax office and uh, uh, some middle class family they won't show their income when they are receiving it on the basis of uh, non formal income so um, so these are all the some exception cases for Uh, applying the equal equality principle, especially the horizontal equality principle, and uh, there will be a debate over the tax reforms has often centered with these deviations of equal treatment of equals are justified. So uh, I am earning one lakh, but from my office, automatically my taxes will be debited and paid to the government office. My, my friend, he is a farmer. He is also getting one lakh rupees, but he is not uh, paying any taxes because it is not counted under any income tax act. Because directly he is getting the money from the wholesaler, and uh, my, my landlord, they are also getting one lakh as rent. They are also not. So the the problem is keep on going, and we have to find uh, the appropriate policy for how we can going to avoid such kind of. issues in following the horizontal equity i hope you understood people what is horizontal equity yes sir yes sir yes we have one more minute if you have any questions doubts clarification you can ask me so principle of taxation uh main principle is ability to pay principle second one is benefit principle that is uh, equivalence between government services and um, tax payment then uh, the uh, the principle the uh, the principle of taxation the another principle of taxation should not affect the market decision then we have also seen the distribution of tax payers 
how it has to be distributed among the people then we have seen the horizontal equity that is also another principle of uh, the taxation system then we'll discuss about uh, and the uh, canons of uh, taxation and the another uh, principles of taxation some of the principles then vertical equality equity also we'll discuss in the forthcoming classes okay thank you students all the best thank you sir